Hello, hello. Good evening. Hi, me. Good evening. How are you? Fine. Okay, perfect, guys. Thank you. So, so que no se conecta a ellos y termine su ubicación relativa. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Okay, guys, so today we're going to start with unit three, pre intermediate two, same, but today we start with unit three. If I know ground, this is our second week, so you have to be on the 50% on the platform. Si no estoy mal, vamos por nuestra segunda semana, entonces sí tendríamos que ir al 50%, ¿verdad? De avance en la plataforma. Y vamos a esperar unos. Tres minutitos lo más para ver si se conectan el resto. Si no, comenzamos, chicos. Okay, guys, so today we have time expressions. That will be the topic for today's class. We're going to uh, study with at, in, on, around, late, until, early, before, and after. Okay, do you remember in the previous unit that we have the expression saw, to, either, neither, I'm crazy about, I am the mood for those expressions. I told you that they can be used in any grammatical tense, so they are not classified in a specific, right? They are not just in simple present. They are not just to talk about past. No, they are time expression. Most of the time we have common type expressions that you can use it in, in present, in past, or in future. It doesn't matter. But sometimes you have some specific time expressions that they belong to a specific time and you cannot move it. For example, if I told you, let's see. So if you have tomorrow, for example, that is a time, time expression, but this is not to talk about past. So if you say tomorrow, it's impossible to use it in past because the meaning is a future moment. The same happened if you say yesterday. Yesterday, so yesterday. So that is not to talk about future and it's not to talk about present, right? Because it's a past time expression. Or if you say in this moment, for example, in this moment, it's just in present. So some of, some of them can be used in a specific or in a certain time, like just to talk about future, just to talk about past, or just to talk about present, but many of the time expressions, they are completely, uh, they can use uh, totally in any time that you want, it, in present, in past, in future, but be careful with them. Because sometimes I have seen some sentence that we, we can create like, I will be at home yesterday. That is not possible because will is to talk about future. 
And if you say yesterday, it's a past time. So be careful with that, but with the expressions that we have for today's class, that is not a problem because they can be used in any time. In, on, at, around, late, until, early. Before and after, with them, we have to be careful. It depends on the situation, but yes. They don't belong, most of these expressions, they don't belong to a specific time. They can be used in any. Okay, so let's see the first one we have. In, on, at. Okay, if you remember, in, on, and at can be used as preposition of time and preposition of place. In this class, we only give it give to it the focus on preposition of time because they are time expression. But remember that we use in, on, at to talk about uh, places too. For example, at home, in classroom, on the table, and they are places. But what happened if you want to talk about the time? You also can use it because they are the three common expressions. In, on and at. Okay, let's see how can we use it. At is to talk about exact time. On is to talk about day and dates. Day and dates, they are different. Day is just Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, tomorrow, yesterday. But if you say dates is May uh, 12th or January 1st, you have the number, right? The specific day. And the last one that is in is to talk about period of time. It's law, it's a little bit. Um, uh, we have a more range to talk about time. But if you want to see in a different, uh, let's see, I want to show you a picture in on apps. We have a triangle that it's so useful when you talk about preposition of time like this. Okay, give me a second, this one. Okay, if you talk about in, that is a general expression. It's the bigger of them. To talk about centuries, decades, years, months, and weeks in general. In two weeks, in July, in May, in 1970, in the 80s, in the uh, 1800s, for example. On is more specific. It's smaller than in, but it's a still general. Like, talk about days and weekend. Two days, the weekend. That's a bigger, uh, that could be a smaller period of time. On, more specific. But if you want to be very, very, very specific, you use at, and you say, you only use it to talk about hours. At 30, um, half past six, um, 12 past two, 12 o'clock, 5 p.m., 7 p.m. We use it to talk about time. Now, let's see, how can we use it with example? Okay, I will ask to Adolfo, can you help me to read? Okay, when to use at or time? Good night. So, uh, it's, uh, um, at. Yes, yes, to read this. Oh, all right. Um, at nine o'clock. All yes, yes. Oh, okay, okay. At nine o'clock, at eleven p.m., at midday and midnight. Okay, thank you. Okay, at is when you want to be so specific. At nine o'clock, at eleven p.m., midday, midnight, because they are a specific points or a specific hours during the day. That's how we divide it like that. Like this example. Okay, I will ask to Adelina, can you help me to read them? I went to the tray example. 
Okay, teacher. I went to the doctor at eight o'clock this morning. The shops open at 9 a.m. I go to bed at midnight. Okay, thank you. So guys, as you can see, we have a specific hour at eight o'clock, at 9 p.m. At midnight. Why we call midnight a specific time? Because we only have one midnight in a day, one morning, one evening, one afternoon. It's just one in a whole day. So tenemos una medianoche, un mediodía, una mañana, una tarde. That's why they are considered, even they are not a specific hours and a specific period during the day. So at is the most specific expression, time expression that we have, well, preposition of time that we have. But we have some exceptions, some exceptions that you have to consider that they don't sound or they don't look so specific, but we have to use at. Okay, also we use at for an exact or precise time. Some phrases do not follow the rule. So they are exceptions. So we also have, or we can say, at Christmas, because you talk about the celebration. That is the specific, the specific celebration at Christmas, at Easter, at the beginning of, and you complete what? At the beginning of the week, at the beginning of the class, at the beginning of my day, at the beginning of the, what could be the meeting, whatever, or the opposite. At the end of, at the end of the day, at the end of the month, at the end of the week. They don't sound so specific. Estas expresiones puede que no les suenen un tiempo tan específico, but they are exceptions. Son excepciones. Y también las tenemos que decir con at. For example, this one. Okay, I will ask to Larissa, can you help me to read the example? Just a sentence. Okay, just this. Old, almost. Yes, just the, the part that is in yellow. Okay. I play tennis at the weekend. She doesn't work at night. At Christmas, we spend a lot of time with your family. I am not working a lot of at the moment. At the end of the lesson, the teacher gives homework to the students. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Now, we have an exception. At night, you say in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. But when you talk about night, you cannot say in the night or in night. No, you say at night. That is an exception. Because phonetic, the sound, that would be better. Imagine you say, you say in night, both, uh, both words start with N. So it's a little bit difficult to pronounce it. So that's why we don't use it like that. And you say at night. Cuando hablamos de los tiempos del día, at night es el único que se ocupa con at. Luego, en la mañana, en la tarde, en la, por la noche. So, ocupan con in. Just be careful with that. Then, at Christmas, we spend a lot of time with our family. It's used to the mean of the time of the Christmas holiday, but not the day. It's just like the season, Christmas. You, you know that, for example, in our country, we celebrate Christmas on December. So, you say, oh, we are, uh, that will be at Christmas. That is the whole celebration, the meaning of the celebration. But if we talk about the specific day, you use on, on Christmas, and you add day, on Christmas day. So that will be the difference. And also the other two examples, I am not working a lot at the moment. That is another that should be a specific. And uh, at the end of, or at the beginning of, as I told you in the chat. So they are the exceptions when you use at. Remember at to talk about a specific time, precise time. Then we have a on. Okay, I told you days 
and dates. Okay, I will ask to Rami, can you help me to read them? Uh, good night, teacher. Hello. On Monday, uh, Tuesday on my birthday, on Christmas Day, New Day, New Year's Day, on Valentine's Day, on the 25th of December, on the 1st of July. July. Uh -huh. July. July. Okay, July. thank you. Mm -hmm. So, guys, days and dates. If we have a day on Monday, that is a day on Tuesday, but if you say on my birthday, this is a general expression. So that will be day two. But if you put the number, like on a first July, that is dates, I told you. When you include this one, the ordinal number, 25th of December, that is dates. So, they are the two different moments in during talking about time when you can use on on monday on tuesday on my birthday on christmas day you have to add the word day at the end because if you only say on christmas that will be not correct because remember in the previous example at christmas because it's the celebration in general but if you are talking about the specific one, like 2024, 20, we celebrated in, in our country, 24th of December, that will be on Christmas Day, on New Year's Day, uh, January 1st. Or you say on Valentine's Day, February 14th. They are dates. Or like this one, on the 1st of July. That's how you use it, days and dates. Let's see the examples. Adelina, can you help me? The children are going to the cinema on Monday. On Friday, I go to the gym. Um, I always have a party on my birthday. Valentine's Day is on the... Uh, what do you say? 14th? 14th, yes. 14th of February. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So okay, that's teacher. how we use it. <laughs> okay. Something that is important here, every single time that you say on Mondays, on Fridays, and you create plural, the day kind of plural because you have a letter S at the end of, you mean that you do that activity every Friday during the month. If I told you, we have classes on Mondays, it means that the first, the second, the third, and the fourth week of the month, we have classes. On Fridays, that means every single Friday of the month. That Just to be careful. And when we talk about dates, you put the determiner V, the 5th the of July the 14th of February, when we use it in that, that structure. That's why we have here the 14th of February and uh, 25th December. Remember when you talk about days and dates, we use ordinal numbers. I will send it to you that one. I will send you this picture and I will send you the, the other that will have ordinal ordinal numbers because we use them to talk about the dates like this one that will be remember that el normal 14 14 pero si agregamos el cardinal se nos hace un sonido de th al final 14 and it sounds the th at the end of the number 14 14 Bien, cuando les mande esta, le voy a enviar este cuadrito de acá. Eh, los que están como en rosadito más oscuro, es porque ellos cambian. No solo se les ha agregado el TH, sino que si tienen una modificación en una, en dos letritas o totalmente cambiaron, por ejemplo el uno. Recordamos que es one. En vez de decir one, dice first. En vez de two, dice second. Entonces uno de ellos sí cambian totalmente. Pero en su mayoría lo que se les hace a los números ordinales, que son para hablar de las fechas, 
so, so, solo se les pone una TH al final. 14th, 16th, 17th, 18th, and so on. We continue, continue like that. So I will send you this at the end. Okay. Then we go with in. Okay, Larissa, can you help me to talk about, to read the, the, the uses of in? In, in the summer, spring, season. In December, January, months. In 175 and 217 and 200. 25 years in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, period during the day, in 10 minutes, five years, four weeks, future, 10 minutes from now. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, thank you. So in all of these situations, we can use in. Remember the first one that I, when I told you that at cannot be used with in, aquí está la excepción. At night, decíamos que cuando era la, la noche, solo se decía at, no podemos decir in. Pero el resto de momentos, la mañana, la tarde y la noche, aquí se, se ocupan con in. In the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, every single time. That would be like that. You cannot change that. Just at night. In that situation, yes, we can use it with at because it's an exception, porque era una excepción, pero con los demás siempre in. Okay, when you talk about seasons, in summer, in spring, in winter, in autumn, we use it in months, the 12 months of the week, of the, of the year, sorry, in December, in February, in May, in April, and also when you talk about years, and when we talk about future, 10 minutes from now. This, the 10 minutes, this, the 10 minutes. In 10 minutes, in five years, in four weeks, and we can continue. Uh, desde los cinco minutos, incluso desde antes, a veces se puede ocupar. Ocupamos in to refer to future time, in. And we have some examples that we can Discuss. Okay, I will ask to Adolfo help me to read just examples. Just this part. Okay. I like to go on holiday in winter. My birthday is in April. I was born in uh, 195. I don't work in the evening. I am going to start my new job in five weeks. The lesson starts in five minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. So, something that we can, oh, that could be confusing sometimes is when you say, I go to the gym in the afternoon because it's just the moment during the day. But what happens if you want to include the day? Lunes, Por la tarde. If you say the day, we have to switch and we use on Monday afternoon because the first time is the day, porque lo primero que se menciona es el día. Entonces ahí ya no podemos decir on, ya no podemos decir in, perdón, in the afternoon, sino que vamos a decir on Monday. That would be the difference. On Monday afternoon, in afternoon or just on Monday. It depends what do you want to say. If you only want to mention the day on Monday, you say, I go to the gym, to the gym on Mondays. That could be every single Monday during the, during the month. But if you want to talk about Monday afternoon, it's the same. That would be on Monday afternoon. Why? Because you mentioned first the day. But if you only want to say afternoon without mentioning the day, 
in the afternoon. That's how you classify it, so be careful. The first time that you mention is the most important to decide which a time expression or which preposition do you have to use. So be careful with that. Okay, that was in, on, and at. Then we have, just let me show you, the exceptions. We don't use at, on, in, neither in, any of them, when you have this type of, this type of expression. For example, ever, this, tomorrow, last, y next, they cannot be used with preposition. Estas expresiones, ninguna de ellas se les puede poner antes. Ni at, ni on, menos in. None. You only say every complement. This afternoon. Tomorrow morning. Last week. Next, next year. Every a day. But we cannot say in every day, at every day, on every day. No, that is not possible to use. So omit it. For example, this. Every week, I have an English lesson on Monday. I had an English lesson at Monday. Next Monday, I'm going to have an English lesson. I don't have an English lesson today. It's at the end or at the beginning, but you cannot include preposition of time. Tomorrow, I'm going to have an extra English lesson. It, it only say tomorrow without in tomorrow, at tomorrow, on tomorrow. No, we cannot. Or yesterday, I had an English lesson but we don't have the preposition. Estas son las excepciones con ellas. No, we cannot use on, in, neither, at. Never. Okay? So, now guys, let's see what happened with the next two examples. At the end, we're going to practice with the prepositions. Don't worry. And we still have the speaking class in which we can practice with this. I will send this a uh, presentation to help you to, to study because on Monday we have the second part. We're going to talk with do, play, go, and frequency adverbs. And then on Tuesday, we have the speaking class about it. So we're going to have an activity. Okay, the next one is when you want to use until and by. Okay, with this, be careful because pay, try to pay attention because they are a little bit tricky, but let's see. Okay, until, let's see. Adelina, help me to read. What happened with until? Uh, until is a preposition and a con con conjunction. Conjunction? Conjunction, okay, teacher, sorry. Until is often uh, shortened to till or Till. till and till are more informal and we don't usually use them in formal writing. Okay, perfect. So, until, until, but we use it as a contract. We can contract that expression. Like verb to be, when you say she is and then you say she's, it's the same. We can contract this expression like till or you put the apostrophe and you only put t-i-l this is the contraction of the time expression contract okay and then the full structure is until it's a preposition and a conjunction in this in this class we only focus as a preposition solo la vamos a enfocar como preposición porque estamos hablando de expresiones de tiempo. Preposition of time. Until. Till and till, they sound exactly the same, are informal. So we use it when you are chatting uh, with a friend, when you are talking with someone, but it's a friend of you, or it's someone that, that you really trust, but if you are talking to your boss, um, to someone older than you, probably, you cannot use until, 
right? That is not, not a good idea to use. So just till, until. Okay, now, what does it mean until or how can we use? Until as a preposition, it means a specific time. When you could a specific time, it's like to say, I will write it on the chat. That would be the meaning in this part. Okay. Until as a preposition means up to. The time that we play chess until midnight. Up to midnight. We stop to play at midnight. Until at, as the film didn't end till 11 o'clock. Another moment when you can use until is when we form with until or till the contraction to talk about something begins and end at the end. It's like when the, the beginning and the end of that situation. I work all at the gym from 6 p.m. till 7 or half past 7 p.m. The beginning and the end. Two periods of time. When you know the exact uh, time. The row outside or house will be closed from 6 a.m. till 6 p.m. tomorrow. Okay, if I ask Larissa, do you work or do you study? Actually, I Nothing. No? Okay. No. Do you like to watch TV? Yes. Okay. Can you tell me your schedule to watch TV? From, to, or until? Mm. I watch TV. From? Mm, from... 5 p.m. Until? Until 7 p.m. Okay, yes, that's how we use it because we have a period. Uh, tenemos un periodo de tiempo y decimos desde hasta tal hora. We use until. I wake or I take a bath from 6 a.m. till half past 6. I want to enjoy, I want to relax at, at my bathroom. So I took 30 minutes back. That's how we use it. Or when you talk the end of a situation, cuando hablamos del final de un periodo de tiempo. I play soccer until 8 o'clock. I took my dinner until... Uh, or I finish my dinner until uh, half past 7 p.m. That's how you use it, until, okay? Is that clear? Do you have questions with until? Patience, guys? Me, teacher. Yes, tell me. Okay, uh, the first form is from Till. Mm -hmm. The second form is until. Until. We can use both because remember that you can have, you can use until, like the full structure, la estructura completa is until, pero la palabra completa, until. Okay. Y si la queremos contractar, se puede contractar de estas dos formas. Se puede decir till, T-I-L-L, -L, o se puede poner till, se pronuncia igual. Apóstrofe T y L. Ah, ok. Uh -huh. Solo es la contracción. Pero la estructura es that one. You can say until or till. It's which, which one you prefer. Thanks. Ok, perfect. Then we have by. By is another. But they are kind of opposite. Ok. By. It's no later than time. Something happens by a time, but in the future. 
And if you remember, until is up to, but not after a specific time, to say a long situation continued. I will stay until four o'clock. It means that I am in the place and I will stay in that place until four o'clock. Todavía estoy ahí, me voy a quedar hasta las cuatro. That is until. Are you going to work until 11 eh, o'clock? Vas a trabajar hasta las 11? It's a long situation continue. It hasn't finished. You continue doing the activity. Now what happened with by? By is something that will happen, but in a future time. Please send me the report by Saturday. That would be. Please send me the send me the report by Saturday. When you talk about by, that will be a future situation. So remember, if you say until, that would mean, and when you say by, that will be, that will be el, on, um, that will be the two translation, el para el. In el sábado, or el sábado. For example, please send me the report by Saturday. We need to be there by noon. En la tarde. He had promised to back, to be back, is that regreso? By four o'clock. Job application must be received by the 22nd April. I send the documents to them today to stay to stay so they must receive them by on Friday. So guys, that's how we use it. Please give me a second. Questions about by and until? Or is that okay? Not sure it's okay. No, there it's okay, teacher. Okay, perfect. Now, and the last, I left them at the end because they are the, the easy, early and late. They are synonyms, so they are so similar when you say, for example, before and after. Early, that was a bit, uh, three uh, times. If you say early, it's like to say before. And if you say late, it's like to say after. Before time, after time. Early, before. Late, after. They are synonyms and you can use it both in the same situation. That's why I bring just a couple of examples, but they are uh, easy. Early means done before, as I show you. Done before the usual or expected time that you pretend to do something. And we can have this type of example. So I will ask Adolfo, help me with the first three examples. Okay. Uh, my father started to work early in the morning. It is too early for the children to go to school. I'm glad you you are you're early. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm glad it's like to say I'm happy. I'm happy you are early. You came early at work, but could be it. Early, yes. Mm -hmm. So when we use early, it means before the usual or expected time. And in this slide, I will give you uh, some opposites to uh, early. Late is opposite to early. Slow, tardy, backward, last, recent, latest, all of these expressions, they are opposite. Todas esas que están aquí en el cuadrito amarillo son opuestas a early. Early is the same to say before, for example. And then we have the other that is the opposite. That would be late. Late means taking place after the expected time. 
And of course, I will give you the opposites uh, of late. Early is the opposite, premature, first, all, quick, fast, snappy, all of them, they are opposite. Todas estas son opuestas a late. Si queremos hablar de un tiempo eh, antes, estos son los opuestos. Y si queremos hablar de un tiempo después, los que están acá son los opuestos. Ok, so we have a couple of examples. So I will ask to Adelina, help me to read the first three examples. Ok, uh, my, my dad is always late for work in the morning. Sorry, sorry, little man, but you're too late to take the exam. It, it is still not too late to apply for the contest. Mm -hmm. Okay, just that one, apply. Apply. Okay, okay, teacher, sorry. Okay, no, don't worry. <laughs> don't worry. If you pronounce something bad, don't worry. That would be apply. Yes, that would be means aplicar. And contest, that would be like concurso. Contest. Or, yes, concurso. Or even competition, something like that. Contest. Yes, so late and early, they are opposite. And you use it to talk about before or after time. That's why I left them at the end, because they are not complicated. And the last, I think they are the last one. Yes, yes, I think. We have before and after. Okay, before and after. After plus a phrase. And use later alone. Later should be used alone in a sentence. At the end of the sentence or at the end of the phrase. Okay, in, let's see this, this example. Okay, ladies, help me to read this. I call you later. I will call you after I get home from work. Mm -hmm. Okay. So after and later both means después. What is the difference? After you have to use it with a phrase like this one. After I get home. But later it means después but you have to use it alone. I call you later. Or when we say, see you later, guys, we use it at the end of the sentence. But after cannot be used at the end. It needs a phrase when you use it. Or let's see the other two examples. I will ask to Adolfo, help me to read them. Okay. Fear he bought a new car two weeks later. He bought a new motorcycle. He bought a new motorcycle two weeks after they bought a car. Okay, perfect. In this situation, we don't have later specifically at the end of the sentence, but it's something important because we have a coma. You are separating both ideas or both sentences by the coma. Two weeks later, you pause, you put the coma. He bought a new motorcycle. It's not at the end of the expression, but it's a kind of an independent sentence uh, in the paragraph, in the text, right? So that's how after you have to put a phrase and later it's alone or that will be before a coma every single time. You can see later plus period of time to refer to an on a specific time in the future. When you put later and then you put time period, it's to talk about or to refer about on a specific time in the future. For example, these two. Okay, David, can you help me to read these two examples? Okay. I will finish the project later this week. We be go vacation later this year. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you say this week, 
that could be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I don't know the day. Is that in a specific, on a specific time? I know that would be this week, but I'm not sure about which day that is the purpose. Or did you say this year, I'll go, we'll go on vacation later. This week, this, this year, okay, it's 2023. But it could be May, June, July, August, September, because I don't know the specific time. That is the difference. Okay, so after, you need a phrase. Later, you put at the end of the sentence or you use before a coma. And if you say later, and then you put a period of time, should be on a specific, just to refer to the future. So guys, do you have questions about it? Or is that clear? Is that okay? Questions? Me teacher. Clear? The, oh, you have? In the last sentences, mm -hmm. you can use in the next years. The next years? Is the same? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. We could be plural. Yes, you can say the next years. Like this? Yes. Yes, that would be. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Yes. The idea is that you should be on a specific. Solo la idea es que sea un tiempo inespecífico. No puede decir eh, later on Monday. No. Okay. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. okay. Perfect. Now. Let's see the next one. And that would be the last one that is before and that would be, sorry, ago and before. Okay, what happened with ago and before? We use ago to talk about past times in reference to the current moment, a past time in reference to the current moment. And you talk about before, you use before to talk about past times in reference to another moment in the past. For example, if you say, I graduated from college three years ago. This is now, you're talking about now, a moment from now, I go to talk about past time in reference to a current moment del pasado, haciendo referencia a un momento ahorita, sobre ahorita en el presente. I graduated from college three years ago. Three years. Three years in past. Three years ago. But what happened if you say before to talk about past times in reference to another moment in the past and not to the current moment. Past and past. This is past and past. And this is past and present. That is the difference. Imagine two weeks. I met my girlfriend two weeks before I graduated. Different between before and ago. So, ago is talking about past situation and you compare present situation or a, a current moment. You are talking about, oh, I finished my career. Now I'm working as a, as a doctor and the other person asks you, and when did you graduate from college? Okay, I graduated from college three years ago. They are having a conversation and you are sharing information. And you compare past situation to a present situation. But when we use before, you are not talking about a current situation. You are talking about two moments. Two moments in the past. Like this, two weeks. Ah, and do you have a girlfriend? And how did you meet her? Ah, I met 
my girlfriend two weeks before I graduated. Two situations. If they ask you guys, what was the first situation? ¿Cuál era la primera situación acá? What would be? In the I graduate. Uh -huh, exactly. That is the first one. I graduate. That, that, that is the, yeah, they, they don't have an order. But that is one of the situations, exactly. I graduated. And what was the other? The other situation in the past? I meet my girlfriend. Mm -hmm. I met my girlfriend. Two situations in the past. And they don't have nothing to refer at the moment that we are talking. I met is in past. And before I graduated, it's in past. Esa es la diferencia. Ago and before. Is that clear? Yes. So is that clear, guys? The difference between them? When to use it? Yes, teacher. Okay. And let's see, it's missing. Okay, let's see, it's, it's missing one expression that would be around. Okay, around, that would be, yes, it's missing. Okay, we use around as a preposition. That could be many uses, it has many uses. Just let me check something. Yes, it has many situations. In a position or direct surrounding of something, in a direction going along, the edge or from one part to another, all of these uh, meanings as a preposition around could have. Like I told you, like by, como les dije de by, que podía traducirse de diferentes maneras dependiendo de la situación en la que se utiliza, the same happened with around. But you are talking about time. Like most of the time we, we talk about time, but we also talk about play. If, for example, if I told you it's around 9 p.m. because it, it just have a four minutes to, it, they are just meaning six minutes to 9 p.m. It's around 9 p.m. Like so-so. But we also can say, we sat around the table, around. That is not time, that is a place. When you sat, nos sentamos alrededor de la vez. It's a location. But if you say, he put his arm around her, that is another, it's not time. It's a place, a movement, direction to do something. But what about if I ask you all of this, and are examples when you are not using around to talk about time. So then uh, you can check them, all of them. You can read it. But sometimes remember, around also can be used to talk about time. For example, if we say this, this, this example. Okay, I will ask to Adelina, help me to read. Please. The trick. Okay, uh, he always leaves his clothes uh, lying around on the floor. Uh, she went into town and spent spent two hours just walking around. Uh, let's take the children to the park so they can run around around for a while mm -hmm. okay thanks so position movement place clear direction purpose or order and we we talk about position that could be this one he always leaves his clothes lying around it's like when you say deja la ropa por todos lados <laughs> in the floor that could be but they don't have a specific order it's just 
position. When you say she went into town and spent two hours just walking around. Is move me, move me, moving, sorry, moving in the town. It doesn't have a specific direction. But what about if we say, let's take the children to the park so they can run around for a while. That is purpose. We have a purpose to do something. The idea is to bring the children to let them play for a couple of minutes there. That is another use that you have when you use around, okay. And the last that we have in the place where you are, or if that is near where you are. I used to live around here, cerca de acá. She never is around when you need her. Nunca está cerca cuando la necesito. She's never around when you need her. Will you be around next week? ¿Vas a estar por acá la otra semana? Will you be around next week? Or you can say, she likes to sing loudly to herself when there is no one around. That is another moment uh, to talk about. Uh, moments, uh, another preposition, sorry. To talk about moments when you can use this preposition around. With this one, be careful because it, it could have many different meanings. Imagine you can talk about place, you can talk about moving, a clear direction, if you have a purpose, if you have an order, or all of these, then that could be another example, then maybe you can read them to study about, and that's it. That was the last phrase that we have, and which we can use around. On Tuesday that we have the speaking class, we're going to practice with this preposition because I know that we spend the, the, the whole hour uh, just studying them, but I want to make you clear when or how you can use them. So guys, do you have questions about any of the expression that we studied today? Do you? Mm -hmm. Do you have any place to practice this class? Yes. Yes, we have. And also we will practice on, on Tuesday. El martes que tenemos en la speaking class, voy a eh, hacer prácticas sobre las proposiciones. Y también les puedo enviar unos links para que ustedes practiquen eh, por su cuenta, si quieren hacer práctica extra, pero igual, no como tarea, solo para practicar esta, estas proposiciones. Se los puedo mandar también. Ok, thanks. Okay, perfect. So guys, we're going to stop here because of the time and I hope to see you on Monday. Happy weekend and I hope to see you. Thank you. Thank you, Miss. Good, Good night. night. You're welcome. Good night, Good night, teacher. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye. See you.